Jack and the Dragon. When I was a boy, Auckland had no roads. Grandad pushed his wheelbarrow out of the shed. Where did the cars go? Cars hadn't been invented yet. Grandad sat down, so the wheelbarrow turned itself into a comfortable chair, his feet on the ground between its handles, the iron wheel turning in midair. Tell us about it. Grandad nodded. Except for the ninnies who got seasick, most people were quite happy coming and going by boat. Did Granny get seasick? Grandad looked at me and grinned. Don't tell her I called her a ninny. Once upon a time, Auckland boiled. Something white hot burst out of the waves and flew so its shadow darkened the city. Water hissed and steamed off its back. Then the hot rain stopped falling. People closed their umbrellas and saw a colossal armor-plated dragon curled up on the rock outside the harbour. Gone to sleep like a big friendly dog, the grown-up said and smiled. The corners of their mouths drawn back. We're safe as houses. But a brave boy named Jack saw the seawater bubbling around the iron claws, smoke trickling out of the bronze nostrils, and a secret grin on the scaly mouth. And when everyone else had gone to bed that night, and the monster yawned, Jack saw the sky turn red from the flaming furnaces deep in the dragon's brassy belly. Wake up! Wake up! But by the time the grown-ups woke and looked, it was dark again. Go back to bed. Your idea, waking us up for nothing. In the morning, a whole street full of houses had been burnt down, and the people inside them cooked and eaten. And the next night, the sky turned red again. Another street full of houses burned down. The grown-ups tiptoed past, not looking at the heaps of gnawed white bones. In loud voices they said, There's no such thing as dragons. Grandad looked at me, and I asked, Why didn't the people run away? Told you, no roads, no cars. Planes? Not invented. What about boats? That very night, a ship slipped out of Auckland. But dragons can see in the dark, even with their eyes shut. This one lifted its great armoured head, and it opened its scaly mouth, and it huffed and puffed, and the sky turned red as it cooked the captain, the crew, and all the passengers with its flaming breath, sprinkled them with salt and pepper, and gobbled and swallowed them greedily down. Crikey! The mayor called all the grown-ups to a meeting on Queen Street, but most pretended there was no dragon, and the others blamed the weather. While they were waving their arms and not listening to each other, the brave boy called Jack rode out in his dinghy, and before it could smell him, sprayed quick-setting concrete all over the dragon. It spread its enormous wings to fly, but the concrete set hard. The tail, with its poisonous sting, the wings, and the great armoured head drooped into the sea. The rising tide poured into its mouth, damped down the furnaces and the brassy belly, and the dragon turned to stone. Pahutakawa trees grew over it, and the mayor named the dragon Rangitoto in memory of the time that it yawned and the sky bled. At school, I told Grandad, Mrs. Johnson told us that Rangitoto is an extinct volcano, and extinct means dead. That's what a lot of people think, Grandad tapped his nose, so I tapped mine back. Anyone can see Rangitoto is really a dragon curled up asleep with his head and tail in the water. Grandad pointed at the pointed peaks on top of Rangitoto Island. Spikes dragons grow along their backs, all turned to stone. Is that true? What do you think? I looked at Grandad and nodded. Last Monday, he said, there was a puff of smoke and the sea boiled around Rangitoto. Maybe I didn't spray enough concrete on that old dragon. Were you Jack, Grandad? Grandad didn't hear me. When a dragon wakes up to sleeping for a hundred years, he said, it's hungry. Are you a hundred years old, Grandad? Mm, something like that. Give or take a couple of years. Oh, crikey. That's nothing. Your grandmother can give me a good hundred years. She's twice as old as me. Grandad stood up, put the shovel in his wheelbarrow, pushed it down the garden to dig some potatoes. I ran inside and told Granny the story about Jack and the dragon and how Grandad was a hundred years old. Did he say anything about my age? He said you could give him a good hundred years. 
And you believe them? If you've got half a brain in that skull of yours, Granny told me, you won't listen to a word that man says. And she gave a great sniff.